Hello there, Ian Michael here of Canuck Cinephile Productions, and today I will be talking about doing the Road Agent's Revenge or flipping pistols like the Outlaw Josie Wales. Now, when it came to watching this movie, it is starring and directing Clint Eastwood, and it's a fantastic Western film if you have not seen it. But the one thing I do point out every time I've seen it from when I was a little kid all the way till now, that is that I always wondered how Josie Wales was able to do this flipping pistol move. Now there's a scene uh, about, I say, 20, 30 minutes into the movie when Josie Wales comes into a fur trading post and he comes across two unsavory characters. These are fur traders. They recognize who he is, considering that he's now the outlaw, and he, he is told to surrender his pistols at gunpoint. Now Josie, being the level-headed guy he is, um, does not do anything erratic, he doesn't try to quick draw him right then and there since he has two people pointing their pistols at him. So what he decides to do is that he decides to listen to them and they tell him to be very slow, like molasses in February, and have him draw his pistols out upside down with the handle towards them. So Josie Wales does exactly that. He takes them out and he holds it out towards them. But when they get distracted, Josie Wales just simply does. And dispatches them. Now with this move, it takes a little bit of practice, but the steps to it are pretty simple to do. So here it is and how it is that it's done. Using one pistol as an example, this is the Colt Single Action Army 1873 replica model. It's an airsoft pistol. Um, so it'll only be slightly different from the Josie Wales version, being that it's a ball and powder, black powder pistol from the 1860s. So this is a, you know, a 14 year difference, give or take. Uh, actually 13 years, I'm a bit bad at math. However, with this one specifically, when you're holding it out with the false surrender, uh, the typical thing that you do that would be different from if you're actually gonna give somebody the pistol is that I think if you're actually gonna give somebody the pistol, you would hold it out like this. However, when you're doing the false surrender, you'd be holding it with your pointer finger looped in to the trigger guard. This way, when you're handing it to them, or feinting to do so, you simply let it drop, so it's hinging right where the trigger guard is, and all you have to do is, in one fluid motion, flip it up, and then you cock it, if it'll let me, and fire it. Now also when it comes to uh, doing these flips too, uh, usually it is easier to do it with your more dominant hand than it is to do with both hands like Josie Wales does. Because with your dominant hand, everything is always 100% easier. Because at least then you just you can just keep on flipping it every time you want to with the more practice you do. It's like, uh, you know, cutting something with a fork, a knife, whatever might be easier with your dominant hand as compared to using your left all your right if you're a left-handed dominant person. Now, generally, when I do try to do the double pistol flip, I know what I would say to people if they ever want to try this is that you always want to keep a good space between the two pistols because if you try to do it too close and you try to flip them, they're going to smack each other and then it might fall down or you might accidentally uh, pull a finger by uh, getting it stuck in the trigger guard in an incorrect way. So I just recommend that when you do this, you either keep them spaced far apart or this far enough that you're, you're for sure not gonna hit each other. And then it's just the slow practice of letting them both drop, letting them flip up. And then at the same time, as you're flipping up, I'll show you on the side, that you're pulling the uh, hammer and then you can Pull the trigger. Now, that's easier to do with uh, the the uh, double trigger pull. 
like one and two. And then, you know, from then on, you just keep on clicking back and forth, like, you know, you're at the okay corral. Now, when it comes to a single pistol, what I find is that you can have some different variations. For example, when you're holding it out, you can just do, again, the simple single shot, which is that, cock, bam. There's also what I call, you know, there's the regular fanning the hammer, which is that, and then bam, bam, bam. And then there's like different variations depending on how like, you know, a uh, cowboy was trained or a lawman was trained is that they do a little bit of variations of both. That they flip it out and cock it, bam, 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 bam. And then more, I guess, modernized versions of that would be also what I've seen when it comes to target shooting. When you see the uh, uh, shooters firing at a very rapid rate just to get as many shots out as possible. So like they do with the Winchester or the uh, double barrel shotgun is that they would pull it out and then using two hands, they bam, and then holding down the trigger, bam, 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 bam. Now that's mainly for target shooting. However, if somebody was to find that out beforehand is to pull out as many shots as possible, which would be kind of a waste of time since you only got six shots and these things are tedious to load. Um, if you're very accurate with a uh, low amount of time, then that would probably be the way of doing it. So that is my, uh, tips, I guess, when it comes to uh, making these uh, pistols look authentic on film, because the only other good thing about these types when it comes to using a uh, replica airsoft is that they actually operate and look like the real thing. So with this one, this is for standard operating procedure, I'll show it this way. You flip the cap, the port open, you half cock it. That way the cylinder can freely move. And now in real life, when it came to actually firing these things, the brass would actually be stuck. So you use the cartridge extractor here, which is a little bit of a, a push lever here. You line it up and I'll show on this side, you push it out like that. And then if you're lucky, if they're loose enough, you can just uh, get it out by hand by just letting it drop out. But again, with these things, they're fake cartridges. They're made to accept BBs, which is why they are hollow through the middle. But at least from far enough distance when it comes to filming a scene and such, it just looks like you're loading a real pistol. And nobody's none the wiser when it comes to like, you know, anybody trying to nitpick a film. And there you have it. That is Josie Wales and the Road Agent Revenge Swift.